Hi, and welcome to Dreamfall Chapters. Now, I have been debating whether to record this game or not for a very, very long, 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 long time. I've been mostly playing it in my free time, but considering I had a major computer crash and lost all my save files, I decided this was the best time to do this. This is the third game of an ongoing series. The first game is The Longest Journey, the second one being Dreamfall, and this one is Dreamfall Chapters. Now, you might be asking yourself, Zen, why don't you just play the first two games so we can get the full story? Well, the first game, The Longest Journey, um, doesn't have that much relevance to the Dreamfall series. It makes a few references here and there with some characters and, as well, but it, it's a very beautiful uh, and long game. I consider it to be as good as Grim Fandango gameplay-wise, story-wise. It's just amazing. It's a very, very good adventure game. And you should play it yourself because it's awesome. The second game in the series, Dreamfall, I played while the story was excellent and it's something all of, uh, all of us fans of this series have been waiting for for a long time. It never matched up to the gameplay. The gameplay was horrible. It had many many puzzles and aspects that were just stupid. And unfortunately, I've played the first two chapters in this uh, Dreamfall chapter series. This one kind of doesn't meet my expectations either, gameplay-wise, but story-wise it's pretty damn good. Now the way Dreamfall chapters works, it's very much like a Telltale game. You have this decision-consequence sort of game. And it's very fascinating because I've made some decisions that I kind of want to correct in this one, just to get some other story to develop. And I am uh, very excited to try it out. There's also a video recap on the Streamfall chapters explaining what happened in the second game, and that's also another reason why I didn't want to record the second game. Well, mostly because I didn't like it. But we can get the recap and it explains everything that went on in the previous game, which is pretty relevant, so we're just gonna go watch that and then we're gonna start the game, okay? It's good, it's good, yeah, just, just go with it. Every story has a beginning and an end. This is how our story began. The year is 2219. In Casablanca, a young woman named Zoe Castillo is drawn into a conspiracy when her journalist ex-boyfriend Reza goes missing. Zoe tries to track him down and discovers that Reza is working on a story about a new entertainment device that enables lucid dreams. But this device also opens a back door into people's minds, allowing Watticorp, the makers of the dream machine, to monitor thoughts and steal memories. When Zoe is forcibly connected to a dream machine, she finds herself in another world. Arcadia, the world of magic. Zoe arrives in the middle of an armed conflict between the Azadi, who have conquered the city of Mercuria, and the magical peoples who are being eradicated by the invaders. She soon learns of a connection between the dream machine and the Azadi. Someone is attempting to steal humanity's dreams in order to reshape reality. When Zoe wakes from her vision, she tracks the Dream Machine conspiracy back to the Watticorp headquarters and helps sabotage the project. But before Zoe can tell the world what is going on, she's poisoned by a woman claiming to be her long-deceased mother. Now, in a coma, Zoe travels to a strange and desolate place. Story time. Here Zoe has the power to shape dreams and help those who are trapped in night terrors escape but unable to escape herself. Meanwhile, in Arcadia, the world of magic, we follow the apostle Kian Nirvane as he journeys from the Azadi homelands to the occupied city of Mercuria on a sacred mission to assassinate the leader of the magical resistance. But as Kian learns more about the conflict between his people and the magicals, he begins to lose faith in his mission. He finally tracks down the leader of the rebels, a woman named April Ryan, but refuses to kill her. As punishment, Kian is imprisoned and sentenced to death, and April is brutally cut down. Zoe is in a coma. Kian is in prison. Their journeys have yet to intersect, but that moment draws closer. 
Behind the scenes, the Thief of Dreams is pulling threads and manipulating events. The Dream Machine has been released. Millions of people are addicted to lucid dreams. The Azadi have cemented their rule. Their plot to harvest dreams is moving ahead. Every story has a beginning. Every story has an end. This is the beginning of the end. So without much much further ado, let's um let's start Dreamfall chapters. New game. There are two worlds. Our world, the world of science, and Arcadia, the world of magic. Dreams connect these parallel worlds, but a dark force threatens the very fabric of dreams. Zoe Castillo holds the power to shape dreams and save us from the undreaming, but she is trapped in a place called the story time. Kian Alvane is destined to play an important role in the war to come, but he faces execution for treason against his own people. They are both about to be reborn. A new story is about to begin. Their paths will intersect, and at the end of their journey, they will face the Thief of Dreams. I'm getting so many chills and they're multiplying, and I'm losing control.
They say that every story has a beginning and an end. But that isn't always the case. Some stories simply... stop. My name is Zoe Castillo. I'm dying. I've been in a coma for over a year. The doctors don't believe I'll ever wake up again. My mother did this to me. She put me here so that I wouldn't be able to tell my story, so that she could keep her secrets. It worked. The world is addicted to dreams, to dream time. It's just entertainment. They have no idea what the dream machine is really for and what it's doing to the world. They don't know that someone is stealing their dreams, using them to reshape reality. So, if I'm in a coma, how am I talking to you? Her boobs look weird. The thing is, my body may be here in a hospital, but my mind... My mind is elsewhere. This is the story time. It's the place between. And it's my home now. This place where all stories begin and end, including mine. Finally, we can play the game, and I'm sure you have buttloads of questions by now, but feel free to ask in the comments section. I know a lot about this game. At the moment, only three episodes of this has, have been released so far, so I only know the total knowledge of two and a half games. The person that uh, was given the Viking burial there was um, April Ryan, the main protagonist of the first game. And you saw her die. Or does she die? I actually don't know, but I don't think that's the end of her story just yet. So that's me in a coma in the real world. Sleeping Beauty. Coma as a fashion statement? No, oh, that's awful. But I honestly do look better on my deathbed. Well, your boobs looked a lot huger in the cutscene. Now they're just back to normal. I don't know if that's how I actually look out there or if it's just wishful thinking. Everything in here is made of dreams. It's odd. Like looking into a mirror and seeing a stranger. I think you look much better here, with all them fancy white tattoos. That machine is all that stands between me and six feet under. It feeds my comatose body a fun cocktail of life-saving narcotics. Dad, Gabriel, stops by every day. Keeps apologizing. I wish he wouldn't. You know, in in Dreamfall, the previous game, I always considered Zoe to be kind of a spoiled brat. I don't really get why she has beef with her father, because her dad was kind of like a really cool dad. That was taken when Reza and I were still dating. Feels like a different lifetime. And, well, sort of was. People keep bringing flowers. So funereal. Funereal. I like the sound of that. Wonkers. My old Wattilla. This is basically like a robot toy that can uh, act as your as your uh, smartphone, pretty much. I don't know why they brought him to the hospital, but I'm glad they did. I believe Wonkers still has an important part to play. Wonkers watches over me, night and day. He may be just a toy bot, but there's something comforting about that. So here we are, as Zoe, stuck in the story time, which I personally think is where um, the universe fabricates stuff. 
Everything is fabricated here. Every story, everything that happens is in the story time. So it's pretty, it's a pretty important place. And we're trying to help people that keep getting stuck because of that stupid dream time machine that's poisoning their minds. Someone is not having a good dream. Help me! I can't grab her, she's falling too quickly. Yep. Well, luckily, we kind of have developed some special powers in this realm. We can uh, stop time and help, me! help people. Hold there on. we go. Oh God, don't let go. Never. I'm never letting go. Thanks for... for saving me. Feels like I've been falling forever. What is this place? A bad dream. I'm here to help you wake up. Okay. Okay, it's just a dream. It's just a dream. I could have sworn it was... Real? This feels so real. I know. In a few moments, it won't. You'll forget all about it. But I want you to remember one thing. Stop using that thing. The dream machine. Stop using it or you'll be back, and maybe I won't find you next time, and maybe you'll be stuck in a nightmare forever. Oh god, no. No, I promise I'll remember. Do something else with your spare time. G go shopping. Have lots of sex. Take yeah. your naps. Anything yeah. but this. Everything of that. Time to wake up. Thank you. Again. Who are you? Doesn't matter. You won't remember anyway. Just go and never come back. If only it was that easy for us to escape. But no, we're stuck in this actually pretty, pretty awesome land. Ooh, it's dark in there. I do intend these ap episodes to be maybe a bit longer than usual because I don't know. I don't know how much people are going to be into this, but this is a game that I absolutely, well, will hold very close to my heart, at least story wise. Not so much gameplay wise, and you'll see why. I think I've had nightmares like these. Dark places and everything. It's dark. It's too dark. I can't... I can't move. I, I can't go anywhere. No. Don't. Don't come any closer. Who are you? The darkness. It's everywhere. It's getting closer. Oh man, I can't see anything. I can't leave. It's not safe out there. Come with me. I'll help you escape. What? Who, who? Who are you? You're dreaming. I'll help you get back. Follow me. Follow me, man. You're gonna be safe with good old Zoe. It's dark. It's too dark. I can't... I can't move. I can't go anywhere. It's too dark. Just way too dark. Come on, man. Grow some... Grow some translucent balls already. I hate the dark. I can't stand it. Yeah, everybody does. I don't like the dark. Hmm, my mouse is not very sensitive. That's a bit better. Okay, so I have to do something to this light that's kind of like making the road all dark and shit. Ooh, very, very strange noises. No likey. But we can do we something y. Dream it. There you go. Come on. Come on, follow me. This way. That can't be. This, this is too real. Good buddy. Too real. That's because you're connected to a dream machine. If you remember nothing else when you wake up, remember this. The dream machines are dangerous. Don't use them, or you'll get stuck here, and maybe I won't find you again. Don't say that. Don't say that. I'll remember. I swear. I don't you ever better. Want to come back. I won't touch a dream machine again. Hmm, not so sure that you won't. They are quite addictive. 
Imagine like a more lucid dreaming sort of internet. There you go, more light. Come on, little buddy. That's that bulb won't last long. No, no. I need to stop time. The dark is everywhere. No, no. I have to go back. Back to the light. What are you afraid of? Come on, it's I'm like the only person that you can trust in here. So I need to light it up and stop time. Well, come on. Oh man, I love this. Her tattoos are glowing. This is so fucking cool. Okay, maybe I need to light this as well. That's not gonna last for long. Stay close to me and you'll be fine. Oh, it does last now. I hate the dark. I can't stand it. No one can. You have a light within you. It's strong. But I don't... I don't know how to turn it on. Just stay close and I'll keep it burning. Just promise me you'll stay far away from dream machines. You bet. I'm never connecting to dream time again. Not after this. I'm not sure how many people will stick by this because they won't remember. But whatever. Look at this nice, pretty light. Yes, light is good. Does this shut off? No. That's good. Come, closer to the light. Uh-oh. That's not good. I'm drowning in it. No, no. The darkness is swallowing me up. There's nothing to be scared of. Hmm, mind. Let's talk to him a little bit. I can't see. I'm blind. I'm blind. The dark. It's everywhere. Well, this is what you get by using dream time. You can get stuck in a perpetual nightmare. Imagine that. Isn't that lovely? Light. The dark. Okay, I can't light him the up. The dark is everywhere. Yeah, yeah. There's a light inside him, but it keeps turning off. Something's fighting back. Something's fighting back. It's him. The source of the darkness. He's feeding it. His fear is totally out of control. He's fighting me and he doesn't even know it. He needs to stop or I can't help him. He needs to just look inside himself. It's happening again. It's happening. The darkness. It's closing in. You're letting your fears control you. I hate the dark. I can't stand it. I know, and you're feeding it. You need to let it go. Your fears and worries. You have the power to banish this darkness, remember? The light within you? That's right. The dark makes me forget. So just let it go. Brighten up. Shine for me, you crazy diamond. But I don't... I don't know how to turn it on. You're not alone. I'm here to help you. <sighs> Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, I'm supposed to help you now. Which way is uh, helping you? By the way, Zoe, how do... Zoe is born into the future in like 2200, and she just makes a Pink Floyd reference, which is, you know, it's nice to see that that music survives. Something's blocking me. Or fighting me. I, I can't light it. Mm-hmm. I think it's this dude that is annoying us. Dude, you need to stop doing what you're doing and just stop worrying so much. Take a chill pill. It's him. The source of the darkness. He's feeding it. His fear is totally out of control. He's fighting me. Thank you. Thank you for what? Follow me. My mental powers do not extend to inanimate objects, or light bulbs. See? All this time you carried the light within. There's nothing to be afraid of anymore. Thank you. 
you can go now into the light. Although that kind of sounds wrong. I, trust me, you won't die. Oh, I have to put him there. Okay. Go, go, go there. Into, into the, light. the light. Yeah. Walk into the... Don't worry. Not that kind of light. You'll just wake up. Thank you. You're welcome. What is going on out there? It's getting worse. Yeah. People getting stuck in their nightmares all the time. Well, that place looks unknown. Let's go there. What is that? A bedroom. Bedroom. I know what that means. Monsters under the bed. Or in the closet. Get out of the closet, monster. What are you doing? Get away from there. It's okay, I got this. You won't do anything no, to me. Don't get too close. It will take you. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, nope, nope. If the wardrobe door opens and Kraken crawls out, dream or no dream, I'm not sticking around for that. So what seems to be the problem, girly? Shh. Don't make a sound. It will hear you. Who will? The monster in the closet. It will hear you and eat us both. She's scared enough already, poor girl. I need to be careful. She needs reassurance, not more things to be scared of. She's already scared, but she needs to understand how dangerous the dream machine is. I don't want to scare her. She needs to be scared of what will happen if she keeps using it. I, I think I can reassure her and tell her to be wary of that machine. I promise it won't hurt you. You swear? I swear. I won't let it. But you need to get back home. I can't find my way. The way back is through there. Through the wardrobe. I can't go in there. It will eat me alive. Not if we destroy it first. Do you have the key? I don't know where it is. My mum locks it every night and tells me to behave. Or should I unlock it and let the monster have me? Great parenting. Don't worry, I'll find the key. And whatever's in there, it's no match for me, I promise. Are you like a superhero? Definitely. Something like that. What do you think of my costume? It's really cool. You don't see many superheroes with badass light tattoos. I think she's like the best looking superhero ever. But we need to find the key to open the, the wardrobe. And man, that monster is noisy. This, um, this painting right here is kind of freaking me out. It's moving. I can't look at it. We have a light bulb that I can interact with. Right. Why bother with lampshades when a creepy bear bulb can suffice? I think it looks very Scandinavian. Oh, that light's too weak to have an effect on Mr. Great Old One. Alright. Can I do something with the cupboard? No, I have to do something with the light. Light. And oh, that light this bedroom was this bedroom was designed to be as creepy as possible. Spooky by IKEA. By IKEA. I think that the, the developer of this game, or the writer, or whatever, is from Norway. So of course they would make some references to Sweden. Bless them. Anger. Sadness. She... she had a light. Oh, she dropped it. It rolled away. She doesn't know where it is. She won't go looking for the light herself. She's afraid of the slithering things in the dark. Hey, who can blame her? Yeah, it's a pretty bad monster situation you got there, girly. But you dropped something, and it uh, rolled underneath the bed. Thanks for the hint, game. Oh, it's too dark. I can't see anything under there. Hmm, can I do anything? Bingo. Bingo. It's exactly what we need. Bringer of light. Emissary of electricity. The mighty... Torch. Torch. Yes. Can I look at it? 
Aw, is that Bulbasaur? That's adorable. Okay, so we have a torch that we should use to find the key. Let's go away, inventory. Alright. There's not many places you can go and search for the key. Except the creepy painting. So let's just use that on this. And there it is. Go closer, Zoe, so you can see it too. Got something. A key. Which is awesome. Oh, I take it back. Totally uncool. It's hiding. Stupid, smart, tentacled thingy. It's too quick for me. Too quick for me, eh? Doesn't like the light, though. See, it comes back and then, bam. Gone. So we just have to be a little, a little smarter than it. Bam. Bam. <laughs> One Cthulhu down. And we're just gonna open it for the little girl as well. Because we're nice like that. No, don't get too close. It will take you. See, it's gone. You're safe now. Thank you. But I don't know how to get back home. I don't know where my mummy is. She's on the other side of the wardrobe waiting for you. It's... It's scary. I know. Whatever was in there, it's gone now. I promise. Come on. Don't be scared. Do you use a dream machine? Mum makes me. She says it keeps me occupied. Then she has time to play with hers. The next time she does that, you need to say no. She won't like that. Maybe not, but you tell her it's dangerous, that it gives you nightmares. And if she refuses to listen, tell someone else. Or scream, fight back, run away, just... Never ever use a dream machine. I could tell Daddy. He doesn't live with us, but I talk to him all the time. You do that. Now go through and you'll wake up again. Thank you. What's your name? Zoe. And remember, no dream time. I might not be able to find you again. I'm afraid it won't. I'm afraid it's gonna get worse before it gets better. And now we face the, um, the sort of person that deals with story time. What was his name? I think he was called the Vagabond. The Vagabond. Finally. I need to have a serious face-to-face -face with that man. You're Vaggy. No, I shouldn't call him. <laughs> I shouldn't call him Vaggy. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're probably like a very, very powerful being, and I just insulted you by calling you Vaggy. What's going on out there? More and more people are getting caught in loops. I can't keep up. I thought the dream machines weren't dangerous anymore. I thought we took care of that. If not, then. Hello, Zoe. Sorry. Yeah. Hi. Look, I'm trying to help them all, and and. It's too hard. There are too many. And they're nightmares. They're getting worse. You have to go home. Home? For, for better or worse, this is my home now. This is who I am. The person I used to be is, is gone forever. Whatever's out there, it's no longer my life. All I once had is gone forever. There's no home to go back to and and I don't want to be the person I used to be. I have a purpose here. I can make a difference. If I do wake up, I'll be lost. You might feel that way, but you do still exist and you do have a big part in the story. This is kind of my home now, but hmm. Home. It's no but longer my life, worse, but it's your responsibility. What's there to go back to? Whatever awaits you on the other side is for you alone to discover. Your single thread runs through the fabric of the universe, weaving events together. But where it ends, I do not know. I'm a thread without a spool. Oh, for God's sake, I'm starting to talk like you. What I mean is, I don't have a home. I have nothing out there and no one. I have no one. Besides, I'm needed here. 
What will happen if I just abandon them? Their night terrors are symptoms of a larger disease. As long as the disease itself is alive and spreading, those people will keep coming back. But I'm... I'm not ready to wake up, to face myself again. I'm scared of losing what little I have left. If, if there's a choice, I, I choose to stay. I'm in control here. I don't have to fear anything or anyone. What's the point? There are no second chances. Every choice leads to the same outcome, and my actions have no real consequences, so why bother? Your actions don't have any real consequences here. This place is holding you back. You might be fighting the symptoms of the disease, but you need to fight the disease head on. And I know you must be afraid. I'm not ready to... I'm afraid. I can't do it. The dream is being tainted. The world is getting sicker. They all need you. Isn't it enough that I'm making a difference here in story time? I'm helping those who are lost and trapped. Who else could possibly need my help? The whole world, darling. This is where I belong. I'm in control here. Out there, I have no power. I failed once already. I made a huge mess of things. What can I possibly do to change things now? He's asking me to help, but I don't even know what's happening out there. I don't understand why I'm needed. I did everything I could already. I just want to be left alone. I've done my share. You've been here for a long time, Zoe. The dreaming disease has not abated. It has become worse. I thought we took care of that. When you laid your sister to rest, order was restored to the story time. Faith's presence, feeding on the dreams of millions, was wearing down the walls of reality. Without you, the world would be in chaos. Nothing lost was in vain. Nothing sacrificed was without meaning. You were brought here at the end because you are the dreamer and you belong to this place. But your world is caught up in a dream that never ends. I didn't see this coming. It's an aberration. You saved your reality once, Zoe. This time, all the worlds, all of story time, all of time is at stake. No pressure. When you wake up, this will all be a dream. And that dream will quickly fade. Soon, it will be forgotten entirely. Unless you fight to remember it. What do I need to remember? You must open your heart and mind to messages from those who know what to do. You don't know? I'm not omniscient, Zoe. Much is hidden from me. I can see all the threads as they are woven. But the greater weave itself is too large for me to see. I'm too close, and even here, some of the past is obscured. This bothers me. I believe someone may have clouded my memory by design. An enemy, a shadow with tendrils into story time and elsewhere. All the more important then for you to remember. He's asking me to make a choice, but... It doesn't feel like that choice matters. At the end of the day, I'm just playing by someone else's rules. No matter what I say, the outcome is the same. This is my choice to make, even if I don't know the consequences. I guess you never do. You just do what you feel is right. If there's even a tiny chance that my choice will matter, I can't say no. Oh yeah, the, the main sort of twist of the second game was that Zoe had a sister. And remember our mother that kind of tended, tended to kill us and put us in comas? Well, she did the same with our sister and she experimented on her. And she died and she became a sort of bug in the wire slash internet slash story time and was interfering with things. So Zoe met up with her, whose name was Faith, and she finally, you know, rested in peace. I don't think Faith mm, has much relevance to the Dreamfall series anymore, but it was a nice uh, it was a nice twist and a decent plot point for the second game.
but moving on for this one. Is it, will it even matter? If you stay here much longer, you may never be able to leave. And then everyone's story ends. All the people who love you, all the people you love, and everyone else, past, present, and future. Yada yada, save the world. The story, like I got pages it. Just from a book. Okay, so I go back, face the world, face myself. I have to believe it's worth the battle. I'm comfortable here because I don't have to make any choices. I just react, touch people's lives without fear of consequence. Yeah, but you're not helping them in the big picture at all. Why does it have to be me? It feels really unfair after all I went through the last time around. I don't know if I have a choice. I just wish the choice was left to someone else. Someone stronger and better. Someone with faith in themselves. Oh, you have faith. You had your sister. But it's time to save the world again, I'm afraid, and you don't have much of a choice. Well, you do have the choice to leave the world and, you know, let it destroy itself and everything will disappear from time and space and existence. But we should probably do the other thing. Okay, so... What do you need me to do? I want you to wake up and remember. And then I want you to save- Save the world. I did such a bang up job with that the last time around. You changed everything. That story had a beginning and an end. But it was also only the first half of your story. How do I wake up? There is a door. Find the door and unlock it. And you will wake up. If it's locked, Where's the key? You will know. I'm not trying to be cryptic, but I don't have the key. You do. Within you. I'll just have to trust you on that. Will I see you again? If all goes well, at the end of your journey, when your story is complete, you will see me again. One last time. That sounds final. But, yeah, okay. I'll, um, go. Find the key. Unlock the door. Remember everything. Save the world. Write my story. Return for epilogue. Very hero's journey. You will do fine, Zoe Castillo. I have faith in you. Maybe bigger, bolder words are in order, but they would amount to the same. Good luck. So we basically just have to go and save the world, again. Which is, it's fine, we've done it before, we're good at it. It's just that there's a catch. When we wake up, we won't remember any anything. We won't remember what we did in most of the second game, and we will definitely not remember this place and our awesome tattoos. But nevertheless, it's the only way we're gonna have an impact on the world. I'm not sure how I feel about my father right now. It's a mess. The latest and greatest in chemical life support. Without magical miracle machine, I'd be stiff and cold and probably all maggoty. Hmm, happy thoughts. Yeah, best to stay positive. The little engine that could. Keeps my brain ticking when the rest of me doesn't. If I'm ever gonna find a way out of this place, that's my doorway. Me. Time to mess with me. I tried reading my own mind once. The feedback loop was nasty. I kept bouncing around my own head like... like a reflection in a hall of mirrors. The... I don't know what you'd call it. The signal from my comatose brain. It's too weak. It's getting drowned out by my waking thoughts. To tap into my subconscious, I'd have to somehow boost the signal and turn down the volume on my conscious mind. So my waking thoughts are too loud for me to connect with the with the real world well there's only one thing that kind of connects us sort of is drugs you know the life support i don't really know how we're gonna affect this like really affect this from dream time but from the dream world i mean but i guess we can give it a go this is probably a terrible idea but 
If I can adjust the mixture of drugs going into my veins, I might be able to give my brain a chemical jolt, boost the subconscious signal. Don't know if it will work or just kill me, but beggars, choosers. Thing is, I can't push any buttons from in here. That machine is out there, in the physical world. I don't think my dreaming powers extend that far unless... Unless I can somehow affect the state of things that are mirrored in here. I don't really know how this works, how we can affect stuff in the real world through here, but apparently it does. That thing doesn't have any conscious thoughts. Oh, my bad. No light source there. Hmm. Oh, bollocks, the machine's going nuts. Oh, I feel really weird. Whoa. The machine's gone haywire. It's pumping a crazy Whoa. amount of drugs into my body. This is awesome, man. I just wanted a little pick-me-upper, not an actual OD. I'm gonna die really fast now. So, okay. The cocktail of industrial strength chemicals the machine has injected into my body is boosting the subconscious signal. But now... Oh, it's too fast. Too jarring, like... Like a train of thought going at the speed of light. I can't get a good grip on it. Maybe we can slow it down. Where do you think you're going? Oh. Did you think it was going to be that easy? Yeah? A quick chat with Mr. Dinner Theatre and then sayonara to story time. Hello, second chances. Uh-huh. Don't be a fucking tosser. You're staying here with me. Doing the only thing we're good at. Being dead. So that's uh, Zoe from the second game. And as you can tell, she was a bit of a spoiled brat. I'm not going over this again. I've made up my mind. I'm going home. I am going home. Is that who I really am? Is she what I've been running away from? I don't want that to be a part of me. I don't want anything to do with her. It doesn't matter, she's a part of you. You have to accept her. What was I thinking? She's right. I can't leave. I have nothing, not going I'm going home. Home? Sure. Why not? Why not go home? Easy. Oh, but wait. Your father lied to you. Your mother tried to kill you. You put your friends in danger and you lost every single one of them. Everything and everyone you ever cared for is gone. You're right. That sounds like the perfect home to return to. Maybe she's right. Maybe she's not. Me. Us. Whatever this is. Part of me agrees with her and part of me just... wants to find out for sure. We, we can't know what's waiting for us on the other side, but it's not true. So it's not perfect. What is? I've grown. I know how to appreciate what's there now, what I have, instead of complaining about what I don't. She's right. We don't have a home to go to. I'm not asking for a perfect home. I just want a home. And my life back. <laughs> nice retort, big sister. Did you rehearse that one? What did you call me? Touch a nerve, did I? That was you. You were there. You said goodbye to Faith. It's not for you to mock and use against me. That was never me. You left me behind before that. You ignored your true self and pretended to be a hero. Like that was ever going to stick. No. Not a hero. A grown-up. Unlike the whiny bitch I used to be. But, you know, that's okay. I accept who I was. I accept you. <laughs> Spare me the bullshit. You're lying to yourself. You don't want anything to do with me. I'm ready to embrace who I was. Who I am. Who I will be. Oh yeah? And... And who is that? And this is one of the main decision points that you have to make. Because these will have like... Well, I wouldn't say major consequences, but they will give you... Like different char characters that play alongside you and... Just different backgrounds that you start in. I used to know where my life was supposed to be heading. I'm sure that's where I want to go next. And that's fine. I'm ready for a change. I used to know exactly what I wanted to do with my life. There was certainty in that. I don't know 
why I lost faith in who I was and who I wanted to be, but it's time to find my way back. Now I'm still kind of torn between this, because the first time I played this, I chose this. I used to know when in the second game, basically she was studying to be a sort of bioengineer sort of person, and in the near future in this game, she continues to do that, but it's not that relevant. It's just the part I haven't played. I kind of want to break away from what I chose the first time and what people have mostly chosen, and I want to play the part that I haven't played. So I'm going with the path that once was. I don't know yet. You're a part of me now. You always will be. We need each other. Come on. Life's waiting out there. Let's find out what's happening. My name is Zoe Castillo, and I'm alive.